everyone, it's Ashley with The Candle Collective and I am bringing you a video today in my studio space and I'm gonna talk all today about shipping. So let's all take a collective deep inhale and exhale because this is probably some of the questions that are always resonating around this topic are the ones that I get the most of. And I can like take myself back still to this day of starting my small business. And I just remember like waking up in the middle of the night or just being up in the middle of the night. And it was always around this like thought of shipping and like how to ship products, like what's the best way to ship products. Like it's going to be so expensive. And it just always felt like this topic that was like, kind of this like Oz figure, like behind the screen. And it's kind of like taxes. Like you don't really know, like you don't know what it's gonna cost. You don't know how it's gonna go. And so today we're talking all about it. If you're new here, my name is Ashley. I am a serial entrepreneur. I like to start businesses, keep them going and or sell them now. And today I'm gonna be talking based on my business, which is Upside Goods. I'm gonna share with you guys everything that I do to package and ship my candles. So let's get started to get into it I'm going to share everything that I do with my candles I'm going to share everything that I do to try and with all of the hopes and wishes that I can to get my candles to the customers in a safe and timely manner but all I use Shopify for my website I use pirate ship as the profile I guess that you could say to source all of my shipping costs and if you guys aren't really sure what that means, so you can just go to pirateship.com. Um, there's a lot of different ones out there. This is by no means like the law, but it's the one I use. And basically what they do is they just source different pricing. It's kind of like kayak for traveling. Um, they go and look at UPS and USPS rates based on the dimensions of the box that I'm going to ship and based on the weight. Well, in order to get that, um, you have to have some sort of a handy dandy scale. If you've watched my previous shipping videos, you know that I love this tool right here. Rolo, sponsor me because I am your biggest fan. Um, I've been a fangirl for um, since 2020. Uh, here we are. But this is their shipping scale. It's so nice because it has this cord because if you guys are gonna grow into your business, which you are putting that in the universe, um, then you're going to need to ship very big boxes. And so I literally started out using my like home scale that I weighed this body on. What I would do is I would weigh myself and then I would hold the box and I would weigh myself again and then I would you know find the difference. Have like a proper scale to weigh bigger boxes on and Rolo save the day. I will link every Everything below if that isn't already assumed um, and why we share that to link the things below not so that you guys can just find it but because that's a really nice way to reimburse all the content creators out there um, those affiliate links are great but I'm not sponsored by Rolo I'm just a super fan all my packages I know the dimensions because fun fact I'm gonna drop those here um, this always has to be showed on your boxes. So if you are using boxes that you get either from Amazon or that you get through a local shipping supply store, which is where I get all of my boxes before everyone asks, um, this seal has to be shown on the bottom of your boxes. So make sure that these flaps are always shown. Um, in the event that you ship a package and it is broken or damaged or something, um, you need your customer to ship you or send you a picture of this seal. Um, this is a box certificate, meaning that the box meets all construction requirements. Very, very important. And no one tells you this because no one teaches you this shit in school. They teach you about other shit that no one uses in small business. I'm going to get off that high horse and I digress. What I do is I go to pirate ship once I've already boxed this and I type in the dimensions. I already have all the information that's populated from Shopify of the customer who bought said package. Um, I'm not gonna show you that, but it's obviously going to this person. And then it, I put in the weight, I put in the box dimensions, and then it comes over to my printer, which is my Rolo printer over here. I can't show you guys that, but I'll link it obviously. It is a thermal printer and it prints these handy dandy shipping labels. I buy these off of Amazon. I will link those below as well. No, you cannot use these labels for your candle products. I'm sorry. Keyword is thermal. It prints via heat. Candles get hot. Then your whole candle would just be a mess. Don't, don't, let's just, let's quick Google, figure that out. I'm not gonna get into that diatribe. Okay, 
So I have a wireless Rolo printer. I used to have one that was not wireless at the time. They didn't even have the wireless one. Um, so I would literally have to connect my computer in order to print my shipping labels. Um, skip the mess. You might try and save a buck by cooking it up to your computer, but your business is gonna grow, baby. So you need to go wireless. My computer's all the way over there. My printer's over here by my ship station. Bada bing, bada boom, slap it on, and then these babies are ready to go to UPS. Very fun fact, and this is why you're gonna be thankful that you are still watching this video. For those of you who skipped, you're gonna miss this, and you're just gonna be real sad. If you print off USPS and UPS labels, and let's say you've got a bounty, a mix. So right here, I have USPS and UPS labels. I can take all of these to a UPS mailing center. Amazing. And they will let you drop both off. Now it might vary in other states or cities, I don't know, but I've tested this at multiple UPS shipping places. Now I'm talking about like the print centers. I'm talking about like the notary centers. I'm not talking about the warehouses. I'm talking like the UPS stores. If I go to a UPS store, I can drop off my USPS label and my UPS labels, and I don't have to make two stops. It's wizardry, they don't promote it. I don't know why, probably because they hate doing it, but I'm here to tell you guys, all my candle collective friends, I just saved you a lot of time and energy. Okay, I'm gonna get off that. I'm just really excited. That's the secret sauce, and I'm sharing it with you guys. Thanks for watching. Okay, let's get to it. So. The next question that I always get is how do you know what size box that you should get? Especially like if you haven't started your business yet and you're just launching and you're like, Ashley, I don't know what size box I need. Um, how do I even like be good to be prepared? Like what do I even need to have on hand? All of the things. I'm going to share what works for me, but I'm going to tell you guys, this is like my fourth iteration of shipping materials because over time, one, I had to figure out what worked for my budget and two, I had to figure out what worked like to actually get candles from point A to point B safely. I sell candle vessels that are glass and in tins. Um, the tins I haven't had as much issue of. I mean, if, if they do show up dented at time to time, like people haven't reported it. I had a lot of issues with tins. Um, so tins, I, I pack them the same way that I do glass just to be safe, but I'm going to show you guys. So this is one of my vessels. This is a glass vessel. It's 12 ounce. I use coconut soy. Yes, it does melt. And before anybody asks me, yes, I do worry about it in hot shipping season. But what I do is eliminate any worries that I can possibly control. And I only ship Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. So if somebody orders on a Wednesday night, they have to wait until Monday for me to ship that candle. That way, if I'm getting the time frame because Pirate Ship will tell me what the time frame is of like when said package will be delivered. If I were to ship something on a Friday, I can make sure that something's not just gonna be like sitting in some warehouse or on some like shipping container on a Sunday, just like marinating in its own stew. And that's the only way that I know how to like control that. Um, I used to get like the thermal temperature wrap, bubble wrap, but I never used it. I still have an entire roll of it. it. I didn't feel like it was worth the expense and I just control the days in which I choose to ship my packages. So here's the thing that I found that works for all of my candles. Um, this is just like a unofficial way of doing it and method that has worked. So this candle is 3.75 inches wide and I think it's like 4.1 inches tall. So the way I do it is I just try and add an inch on each side, top and bottom, side to side. But let's just say for sake of mine, this is four by four. So what I use for this is a six by six by six box. So in here, a six by six by six is the same size candle. So I have an inch up, an inch down, an inch side, an inch side. And then that way it allows a nice cushioning up, down, side to side for this candle to move if it needs to, but I do definitely make them snug as a bug. And what I do is I take this candle, I wrap it in one sheet of tissue paper, like a baby burrito, because who doesn't love burritos? Very unofficial. The only reason I wrap it in this is because I use matte vessels, they show fingerprints and they scratch very easily. So this is just like it's protective gauze, if you will. Then I have a roll of this honeycomb paper. 
um, Mixi, Wooden Wick, whatever, they used to use this all the time. And I just got used to using this and I feel like it gives it like a nice little buffer around it. So I rip off a piece of this, I get it off Amazon, it's linked. And then again, burrito method, and I make it snug as a bug. It's literally all that I do. Then I take my six by six by six. Make sure that my seal is on the outside. On the outside, on the outside. Get the shipping scotch tape. Very important. It is quite different than the other tapes. Holds a lot better, a lot more heavy duty. I get a six pack of these from Costco and I never look back. Snug that up. Now, I have these packing peanuts. I get these from a local shipping supply store. I highly recommend if you are in a city that has a bunch of odds and ends mom and pop stores to do yourself a favor and start searching local shipping supply stores instead of just going to Amazon because one, uh, two things can happen. One, you'll have one and two, they offer a price match. It's not a guaranteed thing, but most likely they do. And I get biodegradable peanuts from them. This is a nice talking point that I can share online. I drop a nice layer of all of my peanuts, just enough so it coats the bottom. I pop in my candle. And then what I do is I take all of these peanuts and I package them all around. Like I give it a nice coating all the way around and I make it snug as a bug. I squish these peanuts. Now here's the thing. I did a lot of Instagram polls. I know packaging, all the things we can get lost in the weeds. There's definitely been times where I've just been like on a honeymoon in my thoughts of like really upping my packaging game and getting some really beautiful like boxes and things like that. But at the end of the day, it doesn't fall in line with my company's mission of like really reducing my carbon footprint as best that I can. This is already bad enough. So I'm just not gonna go down the road of like adding boxes and all these different things. That's not the experience that I personally am going for. So I make it all snug as a bug in here. And then I add a top layer of peanuts. I add in any of my packaging materials. I've talked about these in other videos. Um, I put them all in here, write them a little note, whatever I'm doing. And then I seal it up, print out or weigh, print out, slap it on. And then I go to UPS and I drop off all of my UPS and USPS. Now, the thing is, is that whenever I start to add multiple candles, um, I still do actually the same rule and I still try and add that little extra buffering around it, but it isn't so simple as like if I did two of those 12 ounce vessels, which we did the four by four. So it'd be like four by four and then four by four. So that would technically be eight. So then if you had that rule, then it would go to 10. I don't actually do that. That doesn't make sense because you can actually strategically place them like catty corner. So from there, I just kind of size up within what fits. So I go to an eight by eight by eight for two candles. I go to a nine by nine by nine for three candles and four candles. And then if it's four candles with like something else, like maybe they're getting a wick trimmer or something like that, then I do a 10 by 10 by 10. And this is one of the benefits to really finding a local shipping supply store, because maybe if you're just starting out and you're not really sure, um, these boxes are all sold in 25 box bundles. Maybe you just go and you buy five of each and you just play around. And the thing is, is that if you're a control freak like me, it's gonna be very, very hard for you to just accept that a lot of the shipping process is going to be just navigating, testing, trial and error. And that was the biggest like, ugh, aha moment for me where I just finally like released the reins and I was like, you know what? This is just a social experiment that I've got to figure out. And at the end of the day, there's still some shipping supplies that I just simply never used. Um, a lot of times you can get things like this, like this is the gummy paper. I just ended up never using it. I don't really know why I even have it beautifully logoed and everything. I don't know. I just hate the texture of it on my fingers. And so I never ended up using that. Um, there are some boxes that I never, box sizes that I bought at the beginning that I never ended up using. Um, but I still have them on hand. And I mean, I guess that's just like the worst case scenario, but everything is trial and error. I did try a lot of bubble wrap in the beginning and I just found that the 
the peanuts actually worked as a better buffer than the bubble wrap did and the bubble wrap never really fit into the lines of sustainability that I was looking for. Another thing that I do have that I put on some of my bigger boxes or multiple candle boxes is a fragile sticker. I don't even know. This is more of like a placebo effect for me. I have no idea if it does anything at all if anybody listens. If there is like a UPS driver out there or somebody that is um, handling these packages with care, can you just weigh in and let me know if this is like the ultimate dupe and joke out there for um, those of us that are shipping these packages? I can honestly say that in regards to the boxes, there really hasn't been a size that I have used that goes outside of the cubed effect. What I mean by that is like these are six by six by six. I have seven cubed, I have eight cubed, nine cubed, 10 cubed, 12 cubed, and 14 cubed. Um, there's never been a time where I have like an eight by 10 by 16 or anything like that, unless I'm reusing a big box. Like for instance, I have some bigger boxes down here that I will reuse from suppliers like Makesy. They have some double walled ones that are really nice. Um, I'll reuse those to ship um, bigger orders to my wholesale accounts. But other than that, the cubed ones have done really, really well for me. Um, but if you have, like maybe have a specific size of candle that you're wanting to ship, um, or maybe like a pack of candles, that's where the local sh shipping supply store is really gonna come in favor for you guys because literally you could just go in and be like, hey, I have these candles or these things that I need to ship. They can measure it out for you and then they can suggest a size. Now, obviously, if you don't have that, then you can look online, a place like Uline or something like that. And I would probably just err on the side of adding that like one inch to each size just to make sure that you have enough for packing material around your products. The thing that I can really think of that you guys would benefit from is having like shipping stickers or shipping stamps. Uh, these are really nice just to add a little bit of branding to your boxes. Just to give you guys a peace of mind, there hasn't been a situation or scenario where I have literally been left in the shop with nothing available for me to ship out some like obtruse object that's in my product line. Maybe other things that I have to like return to Amazon or things like that, but there isn't something. So I think immediately more than anything, you guys can just like release that anxiety that is given around shipping and just let it know that shipping cannot have a chokehold on you or in your business. Millions of packages are shipped every single day. And just because it's new to you does not mean that it has to be something that is super stressful. It is something though that you are going to have to like release the reins on if you are type A and just like know that it's going to be a lot of trial and error. And I'm just going to like pull the lid off of this right now. You are going to have products that will get damaged in transit. The best thing that you can do for that is just let your customers know that you will take care of it. What I try and do is let them know that, you know, if it's a bunch of candles and maybe one of them got broken, I just immediately refund them for it. And I'll say, I'll refund it for you. Um, I'm so sorry that that happened. You know, if there is any photo evidence that you could provide me that the, the box was damaged or something like that, that would be super helpful because then I can go and file a claim and hopefully get some reimbursement for that refund. But I really don't press it too much. If an entire like shipment is damaged, there's clearly damage to the box, then I definitely press the customer to make sure that they give this like photo evidence for me and to get a picture of this seal. That was a lot of information, you guys. Hopefully this was helpful. If you have questions, please leave them below. I will link all the details to my Amazon shop and everything that I possibly can send you in the right path to to find so that it'll make your shipping journey a little bit easier. And of course, there's some other videos that I've made around shipping. So if you still have some burning questions, those might answer it for you. But this is where I'm at in 2023 with my shipping journey. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't yet subscribed, I would absolutely love if you come along on this journey with me. And I hope you have a great and wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.